How big are you into offshore fishing? I was big time into it. I would go down to Australia about every other year and, and fish for black marlin. I've um, done a lot of blue marlin fishing, um, you know, so I've been a pelagic guy. I got into fly fishing for the pelagics, you know, the big fish. Um, fortunate enough to caught about 390 pound black marlin on a fly, uh, which was maybe my favorite fish you've ever caught. Um, but Why? Then, uh, because you, it's a really the skill between the captain and the angler. Um, it's how we hook up the fish and where we position the line and the hook and how the captain keeps the belly of the line as the drag because you really can't put a lot of load on the fish and you're in, you could be in you know, two, three, four meter seas catching this fish. And uh, so it's really the art of the angler knowing what the captain's doing with the boat and how you position your rod and how you position yourself. And, and uh, you know, it can be up to a couple of hours um, doing that. So my second favorite fish I ever caught was, uh, I was diving with great white sharks and um, they wanted me to catch one, we were gonna tag and release it, we weren't gonna kill the fish. And uh, we got into this massive fight, and I was on 50 pound stand-up tackle on it. The fish they estimated was um, over 2,000 pound. It was a massive, massive great white. And that was like four, four and a half, 445 hours stand-up fighting this massive beast that pulled the boat, I think, something like nine and a half miles, something like that. And so what's your involvement in that when it's going on? Hang on. Okay. <laughs> And it, yeah, it was just hang on to the situation and you, you get into this, you know, like any any athlete, once you get into a certain place, you get in the Zen place. And um, at the end of the day, the fish swam away. I was very happy. Um, you know, the fish really tested me out. And I, when it was all over and done with, I fell on the floor and I was just done, exhausted. I actually had to play a skins game Two days later, I couldn't move my arms. Oh, my you legs, couldn't. My, everything was just shot. It was done. So, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, it was a great test for me mentally as well as physically. And um, so that would be my second greatest catch. And both fish survived too, which was great. You were in Turks and Caicos, uh, <laughs> and you're on your boat, uh, you know, and headed towards Cuba, and or in the general direction of Cuba, and what happens. There was one atoll I've always wanted to either go dive or fish. A few of the guys wanted to join me, but it was a 4 a.m. push off, you know, because we wanted to get there at daybreak and do some fishing and maybe dive on the atoll, which was completely infested with sharks. But um, so anyway, we take off and my sport fishing boat's a pretty quick boat. It does about 33 knots. And um, when you're doing 33 knots heading towards Cuba, you know, radars pick things up a little bit and there's a big red blob put right on top of you. So, I, you know, I'm watching it, watching it. Next minute, the radio crackles on uh, Channel 16. And, and it says, you know, such a vessel heading southwest at 33 knots, please identify yourself. So I identify myself, hey, um, this is vessel Aussie Rules and it's owned by Greg Norman. And they said, who's captaining the vessel? I said, I am, my name is Greg Norman. And they said, is this the Greg Norman, the wine guy? I went, yes, I made it. My life has changed for the better. <laughs> so that was a story, no harm foul, no foul given, no, uh, no foul intended. And, uh, so we continued on with our trip and that was it. I, I know you've had yachts, boats, you know, jets, mm -hmm. fancy cars. What are some of the big boy toys you have now? Um, believe it or not, I've actually, a lot of that stuff, um, doesn't interest me anymore. I mean, I sold all my Ferraris. I had a nice collection of Ferraris. Sold those many years ago because, quite honestly, they're just sitting there and you never drive them. Um, and you're always maintaining them, but you never drive them. There was one car, two cars there, um, that uh, 375, that I took delivery of it, put it on blocks, and sold it on blocks. I never even put the key in the ignition. You did it. <laughs> no. And I'm thinking, okay, all right, it's like a piece of art. It's going to go up in value, but you really have to appreciate it. But it's stuck in a garage. They're all stuck in a garage, air-conditioned garage. And, and uh, so anyway, I got out of that. And, and uh, I just am a little bit more simplified in my life. Um, you know, if people can, I don't mean that in the wrong way, but uh, I am a lot more subdued in the things I like to do and keep around material, materialistic things.